so we have started to use some of this uh, pine here, this pine tree that we uh, got for free delivered to us to create another raised bed here. And this, is, it wasn't super needed to do one of these uh, beds right here, but I have been plan planning to plan out this area for a while and it's kind of near the road and the city mows like around the ditch there so putting them big logs there against the ditch area was like a pretty good idea i think to try to keep them from coming up to our yard area to mow so our you know when we plant it out they won't mow it down hopefully still got quite a bit left for other things but for the most part, we're done putting the pine in there. Need some leaves, straw, compost, soil, some other nutrients maybe to put in there. So in that bed, we want to do it fast, you know, because there's a lot of fat lighter in there and little kids and teens and 20 year olds or whatever love to steal fat lighter, you know, when it's laying out, you know, where people can see it and grab it. They love to start fires and stuff with it. I'm sure the local drunks that, you know, kind of hang out outside on cold nights love to use it as well. When I was originally doing that, I said, do I even need a bed? Do I just put the, uh, just a block, a row of, you know, without squaring it out into a bed, like just putting a row out to block um, people, you know, from mowing the area. So... It could have went either way, but that is bed number four, I guess, we're working on. We have been building what I call a post-mycorrhizal raised bed, kind of building it up over time over this chestnut tree that's highly stressed. It should be probably 30 foot now, but it's like 10 or 12 foot. Uh, always stressed, has a lot of die back each year, hasn't bloomed in a few years. So what happens if we build a mycorrhizal fungi raised bed sort of around it over time, putting those leaves, putting those uh, sticks and branches and, you know, fallen tree trunks and, you know, whatever else around it and let it decompose, you know, through bacteria, fungi, insects, and uh, have that sort of introduce maybe this mycorrhizal fungi into a pre-existing tree or plant is it going to be is it going to heal the plant make it more healthy it are the roots you know as this composts down and creates a soil buildup are the roots going to start rising up into that soil and uh, is the uh, the mycorrhizal activity fungi activity going to you know help it you know benefit it from you know maybe there's a, a certain level of root rot maybe once it goes down so far into this wet ground maybe you know the roots are, are kind of dying and being sickly so like i said what if the roots come up through this mycorrhizal bed and you know it's an experiment now so we will see and probably in the next year or two hopefully sooner we get more growth, more like vibrancy, you know, like a flourishing leaves and maybe a spread of limbs, or is it just gonna to continue to be sick and die, die down a little bit more until it's completely dead? And are there any other plants or trees that we could do more experimentation like this with? You know, you have so many experiments over the years where things that get sickly or they die eventually so what do we have left that's kind of barely alive right here is a seedling grapefruit that has struggled since i put it in the ground you can see all the dead tops i trimmed it last year i believe on video um what if we build, you know, this is, and before anybody says anything, there's oak trees all around here, so it shouldn't be citrus greening affecting it. 
Maybe it's too wet, too dense soil, something else, root rot, I don't know. So let's start building a bed around this guy too and see if we can save it. See if it starts, you know, is it going to get better or worse? Just like the chestnut tree. This thing has been in more of a decline, faster decline than the chestnut. So we got a really nice piece of wood here, but it's full of red ants. There's a big old log there, but that's way too big to put around that little tiny tree. Tons and tons of leaves, camp first wheat gum, magnolia, uh, red maple, uh, some oak, tr oak leaves here. Guess we need to get the rake out later. Couple little chunks of wood. Hey, it's a start, I guess. Here are a few more. We're gonna have to shape it a little bit better probably when we get a nice little bit here. Got a little bit of a square going there for to frame it out. Wow, there's two dead sweet gums, probably 20 foot, maybe 23, 25 foot. I wonder if we can push one of these guys down. I think one's gonna come. Hopefully it don't rock back on me. It wants to come back from the roots. Whee! There we go. That we'll need this whole thing. We may not need any of it, but we might try to get it just a little bit if we can, if we can uh, crush it up a little, make it smaller. Well, it wasn't as ready to break as I was hoping, so I got it into kind of smaller chunks and put it in there. Now let's get some leaves. We've got the trusty old rake here. Not super easy to rake here for all those little vines. You know, you got some little wild muscadines, probably green briar dewberry maybe one or two other things but this this right here it should be full of some uh, fungal roots and stuff and hopefully this will help kind of seed the fungal growth and here shame on me for uh, touching the trunk right well this guy is on its way out anyway so but the, the purpose isn't for for moisture retention where you would like mulch it we're not mulching it we're trying to to raise the soil above the trunk line and try to promote roots to come up into the mycorrhizal uh, active soil. All right, so there she is. Uh, you know, rain time, everything will you know, make the leaves go down further. We're gonna add more, you know, organic material later. We'll probably put some, uh, just like we do in our beds, put nutrients in here, but we might wait until maybe the chances of freeze and frost are over before we do that. How about let's create at least one more bed before this video ends, right? Where are we gonna put it? Are we gonna put it back here in the wettest part of the area? Are we gonna go to another area where it's pretty shady, but there are two large oak trees and we need to get it not just raised up because of the water level and the flooding, but also the roots of these oak trees are so you know, coming out of the ground. So we need to build it up quite a bit if we're gonna plant some citrus trees or something under those two large oak trees. Just a recap of why we would wanna plant them under oak trees. So there is research that oak leaves, oak leaf, like extract, tea, whatever, um, planting a uh, citrus tree under an oak tree, under the canopy will help limit, I guess, citrus greening, disease damage, or possibly even not allow it to ever be affected. We don't know for sure. We know based on some research that the oak mulch does not do much of anything, but oak leaves themselves gives some sort of protection to citrus. So we don't want to put a, like a sugar bale under the oak tree, you know, because that's prime real estate for ones that are susceptible to citrus greening. So anything else, you know, sugar bell is the only thing resistant that is somewhat cold hardy for the area. I think there is like a, a type of lime or something, but that is not cold hardy at all. So right here under this oak tree where we got our little hammock and tire swing, you know, the canopy comes out probably 30 foot to like way over here. So all the, you can kind of see some of the shadows of the tree, I guess. And right there is piles of water. We got another oak tree that way, but we do have our kind of burn pile sort of close to that. So we don't want to burn and kill off 
uh, one. One day I think we're going to move our barn pile to maybe a barrel or a ring somewhere where we aren't burning our plants and stuff. But I think, you know, we could, could put two or three uh, beds here as long as we can mow around it. But let's just put one, you know, somewhere around here. Found a nice limb already, pretty close. Probably within 60 or 70 feet of it. Look at there. That's already pretty much rotten and ready to go. sink in the mud here before we get this bed down. All right, there's the start of a bed. Right beside of it, there's this board that was already freaking laying like five foot from it. Didn't even know it was there. Material. And another one. Wow. Is that just bark? Yeah, that's just bark. But hey, it's something. Got this partially charred one out of the fire. I would normally probably just burn it, but hey, it looks like it's a perfect size. Uh, another one just laying in the grass. Probably 20 feet from the bed. We got a big giant, you know, like a seven or eight foot piece. Need to uh, break it into a few smaller pieces. I think this is oak. Thing to note is if you plan to plant this out faster, you probably should leave an area wherever you want that plant, that main tree to go for your smaller materials, smaller twigs, hay, you know, uh, grass clippings, whatever, leaves, because it may take a long time to break down. Got a little bit of river birch there, a little piece of cottonwood here. So a lot of people may think, well, how long does it take to build one of these guys? And, and being that this is so low here, this area, we're going to raise this up way more. Not sure if we're going to get that on video today. There's a box elder. Different types of wood grow different types of fungus and stuff. This like leaves, you know, certain leaves or pine needles will grow, you know, this fungal and leaf mold. But in terms of how long it takes, it depends on what kind of material material you have available, how close it is, the size of the material, how heavy it is, how easy it is to break, you know, to shape into the size you how want it, how you need the bed to be. If you have the perfect materials close by that is easy to work with, you know, and enough to, to raise the bed as high as you want to frame the outer frame out, then, you know, it could be probably as little as 15 minutes. And, uh, raised bed three, which my son JJ helped me with, and with the camera, you know, doing the camera stuff, which takes more time. We built that bed in like 45 minutes. It probably would have been 15 to 30 minutes if, uh, if it was me alone and no camera, just running around and building that included it. like two to three minutes of raking some leaves. And that, that isn't doing the maintenance on it over time. That isn't putting nutrients in it too much or, or and is not like letting it break down over time. That is not, you know, getting it, you know, adding soil and compost and stuff and getting it ready, especially if you want to plant it out early. If you want to let it, you know, age for six months or a year or a year and a half, then obviously you can build the bed, you can kind of supply it, resupply it with organic material over time, but, you know, it's going to take as long as it takes for you to plan it out and for hopefully you to be successful. The good thing about doing these small raised beds is it, it you know, it's, it's a fast job. If we're talking about like the first raised bed that we, we worked on, which I don't know, what is that, 20, 25 foot? I can't remember. That took a long time. It was built up really high and you have to kind of fill in all the spaces and slowly creep it up and, you know, up and up and up and then you know add i still had to add soil compost and stuff like that to plant it out and i didn't do it super early by the end of this season season two of this raised bed experiment we'll have the knowledge and information of whether or not planting it out early you know is going to be a successor for or a failure and you guys will get to experience that and hopefully learn without having to you know waste time and fail i mean i'm hoping it's a success so 
we'll see. We got the sweet gum here that we just pushed down earlier today to work on that you know, like post mycorrhizal bed. So maybe, maybe that piece there would be good for this uh, bed. We really want to raise it up high, remember it's wet. wet. Sweet gum, so about that high is probably where I'm gonna set this bed, you know. So we get, gotta come around here and try to, uh, you know, level that out to that area there. Maybe about 12 to 14 inches tall. And sometimes you have to wait for your wood to you like rot down enough so it's workable. So we have, you know, hundreds of feet of trees that we probably can't use yet. Check out this bundle of dog fennel. There's still a little bit of green in it. So there's some greens. It's not pure carbon. It's close to pure carbon. Some though. wood there from fallen trees. Maybe if this is workable, maybe this will finish the framing out. That uh, just about matched the height up, so I need two or three more pieces to go for the sides there to kind of lift it up there. We we'll need to build up that a little bit. And if we have too much problem with the, the logs wobbling or trying to fall back, we could also reframe it with more boards around the outer edge. So far we have oak, red maple, cottonwood, river birch, box elder, sweet gum, possibly something else. Let's see if we can find a little piece to, of pine to put in there. Well, there's a little bit of pine, and we might put a little bit of camphor in there later as well, off camera. So, we got that a little bit raised up. There's still air, still air holes. We can put little sticks, leaves, and just, you know, over time, stabilize the frame and uh, fill in those crevices, make them a little more dense, a little bit more able to hold moisture and stuff. But there we go, there's raised bed number four, a good start to it at least. Put this uh, dog fennel, kind of cut it up and just put it in the middle there. 